Hello, everyone, and welcome to this hands online learning session. We welcome you again to this space to be learners along with us and join with us in our learning time today. We, um, my name is Aileen Rizzo, and I'm at the AIM Center, and I'm here with my colleagues, uh, Brooke Williams, who will let wave hello, and joining us soon would be um, Dr. Steve Pauls as well. So we're excited today to um, be with you and to share this activity. At the AIM Center, we're committed to working toward a more equitable world through math and science education. And you can learn more about our work by visiting our website, aimcenter.org. Along the way today, we're going to invite you to use the chat and the Q&A features to ask questions, give comments, let us know maybe some ideas you'd like to share, even if it's just to ask us to slow down, please um, use that as a form of communication with us today. So we're here today and we're excited to be engaging in um, bubble art and all the aspects of what that might mean in a different medium, but also there's some STEM or STEAM involved in that activity as well. So we're excited to do something a little bit different than uh, maybe a more math-centered idea that we've been um, usually doing, but also exploring the outdoors because it's springtime and we're excited to be outdoors a little bit more. And I think this is a great activity that kind of embraces that time. So, um, Brooke, could you share maybe a little bit of what the STEAM content will be and what we'll be engaging with today? Yes, so um, we're gonna be making some bubble art today. And um, along those lines, we're also gonna be kind of exploring some of the steam behind bubbles. And um, I would be outside right now, but we just wanna make sure that you could hear everything today. So if you're outside, have a blast. It'll probably be a lot more fun for you. You could explore a little more. Uh, looking outside, it's a little windy, so it's probably a good choice that we stayed inside. But um, let's see. Okay. So it looks like uh, we've got Steve coming in in a minute, working on getting in. He's going to join us, and he has a lot of really cool uh, facts for us to look at, some fun um, bubble experiments and things that you might not know. And so he's going to share some of those when he gets in here. Um, but for now, what experiences have you had with bubbles in the past? So we've all had a lot of different experiences, exploring with bubbles, playing with bubbles, but when bubbles come to mind for you, what comes up? Go ahead and share in the chat if you have any ideas or thoughts around bubbles and what you've done with bubbles. I'm seeing fun. Yeah, definitely fun. Anyone else? I know as a young one, I just love to just have one of my siblings blow the bubbles and be out there trying to pop the bubbles or try to catch them really carefully and just um, just watch how the wind, you know, kind of drifted them off and explore the ways that the weather and other elements are engaging with the bubbles. Right. It almost kind of gives you a visual of the wind to some degree, right? Yes. Um, some more uh, comments are coming. Interesting, visible spectrum. Yeah. Um, my dog can't see bubbles. Interesting. And then my two-year-old son is amazed by them and tries to capture them. Yeah, for sure. You definitely see kiddos running out, smacking them, um, which is something we'll look at a little later when we're making bubble art and some ideas of um, how we can kind of combine that idea with our bubble art. I love the way um, someone was said the vis visible spectrum, like the the different colors that you see through the bubble with the light coming through it. You also you usually see some sort of like rainbow swirls or different mm -hmm. colors that you see through those. Right, a um, few more coming in. Uh, I love to use them as a study of thin film and diffraction. Uh, one of the facts that we're actually going to look at is a comparison of the bubble film to the size of a hair, of a human hair. All right, makes you smile, fun in the bathtub. Yeah, fun doing dishes. <laughs> Flowing fluid, light movement, exciting time, definitely. So, um, and still loving playing bubbles. It relaxes me. How big can you make one? So we all love bubbles. It's still fun as we're adults. So hopefully we can have some fun today 
and uh, make some really cool bubble art. Okay. Here's Steve, he's with us now. Okay. Hi, Steve. Maybe give him a moment to. Uh, I'm so, st I can't get in. That's okay. <laughs> we'll give you a second. We're excited to hear all of the fun facts that you have for us and the things to share. So uh, you can hear me. Yeah, just we can can't hear you. see me. Right. How very strange. Well, we'll work on that. Well, hello, everyone. It's good to see everyone here. Um, Brooke and Aileen have been talking a little bit about bubbles, and, and it's it's something that we all have experience with, right? We, we have bubbles in the sink, or you have bubbles in the tub. Uh, we're, hopefully, you had a chance to blow bubbles as a kid. And, uh, you know, we, we, we experimented. We were little scientists. How long did the bubbles last? How big could the bubbles get? How many bubbles could you get out of one, pulling one bubble wand out of the solution? Um, and, and I remember as a kid going to a children's museum and uh, you, they had a hula hoop on the floor in a bubble solution and you could pull that hula hoop up and you could be inside a bubble. I was always a fun until you, of course, were covered with um, bubble solution and and uh, had to try to go to the bathroom and and dry yourself off the sticky off. But but we've had these these experiences with bubbles, and it's it's something that that kids gravitate to, parents gravitate to. It's it's something at that that point of interchange where we can begin to talk about science and mathematics and and. There are, there are bubbles everywhere. I don't know if you've had the, this um, happen to you. It just happened to one of my children the other day. They were doing their chores and, and uh, ran out of solution, ran out of uh, dishwasher uh, liquid and thought, oh, well, I'll just use uh, the uh, soap from the sink. Filled it up and walked away. And uh, suddenly we had a whole kitchen full of bubbles, bubbles everywhere. It's, uh, we won't do that again. So the question is, is what do we really know about bubbles? And I was able to monitor the chat and see what, what people were saying and, and uh, the very interesting conversations. But what we know, if I could have the next slide, what we, what we if we look a little closer at bubbles from, I teach, chemistry and physics and, and some of those sciences. And we talk about bubbles as being a long chain molecule, chain molecule made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms, much like oil or gasoline. And that's, it's that long chain that is very important in, into making those bubbles. That chain, that end of the chain is very hydrophobic. It doesn't like to be in water, where the other end of the chain that, that uh, is uh, carbon and the sodium that's more water loving. And so it tends to gravitate towards the water. And what happens is you, in a bubble, in the wall of a bubble, you have a, a sandwich. You have two layers of soap with a layer of water in between. And they trap that layer of water and hold it. And those soap bubbles can have a tension with each other and they form this, this three-dimensional spherical shape that uh, allows that, that bubble to exist. And with different, the fun thing to do is if you have uh, different geometric shapes, three-dimensional shapes, you can dip those in bubbles and see very different patterns of how those bubble, bubbles, uh, films uh, absorb or how they, uh, uh, how they uh, grow among those, those uh, shapes like a cube or a triangle or a, a pyramid. They get very different shapes and that has to do with with uh, trying to get the minimum surface area. Um, on the next slide then, we find that a bubble, this wall of a bubble is really thin that it, uh, remember we had two, three layers, two layers of soap with a layer of water in between. And that is that layer of uh, that, um, 
thin film is about 500 nanometers thick or about 100 times smaller than the width of the human hair. It's really amazing how thin that layer is. And as the water in between those soap layers evaporate, that layer becomes thinner and thinner and thinner until the bubble finally pops. And so you find that in a more humid environment, bubbles tend to last longer than in a very dry environment, they tend to pop a lot, lot sooner. Of course, there are other things can pop a bubble like a finger or dust in the air or different things like that, but um, the bubbles tend to last a lot longer if it's more humid. Next slide, please. So as we look at our next generation science standards or practice standards, we can use this idea of, of experimenting with bubbles, studying bubbles to develop some of these NGSS standards, especially I like the cross cutting standards. But the idea of asking questions and defining problems, what, what makes a larger bubble? What makes a smaller bubble? How long do you think your bubble will last? Um, what color is your bubble? Um, planning and carrying out investigations is, is part of those practice standards, as well as developing and using models to, um, to develop these ideas or concepts. And I contend that uh, bubbles and bubble solutions in different forms would do just that. On our next slide then, we can carry these ideas of bubble science down to very small children and do a variety of experiments and play and embodied learning with our bubbles to, to express curiosity, express, uh, and, uh, develop questions, answer those questions. And uh, it's amazing if you watch even small children with bubbles, bubble solution, how many questions they can come up with and, and um, how they go about trying to solve those questions, you know, find answers for those questions. So one of my, um, uh, one of the questions then for what we're interested in is, is always where is the steam? If we studying bubbles is one thing and, and is fine and dandy, but where's the science, technology, engineering, art and math in those, in that bubble solution? Well, I contend there's a lot of steam in bubbles. They're very steamy. And in terms of science, the color of the bubble, the color that you see in a bubble is a calc, we can calculate that using physics to find out the exact thickness of the bubble because of reflectance and refractance and interference of light with that, that wall, bubble wall, that color is very is a indication of how thick the bubble is. And if you watch a bubble carefully or a film, if you just look at the wand and the, the single flat plane of your solution, you'll notice that the colors do change and continue to change as the thickness of that uh, film becomes less or becomes greater depending where you are in the bubble. The color change is an indication of its thickness changing. The uh, picture on the upper right-hand corner looks like a bunch of uh, car airbags put together. Essentially, they are airbags, but they were airbags for the Mars rover Pathfinder, which uh, went to Mars in 1997. And it landed on the surface by uh, wrapping the uh, rover in these airbags, surrounding the rover in the airbags. It bounced off the surface, came to a stop, the airbags deflated, the pod opened up, and the rover rolled out onto the surface of Mars. Really pretty amazing. In the bottom left corner, here's an example of bubble architecture or engineering taking its cues from a bu the bubble surface to build this beautiful building that's found in the downtown uh, Seattle area. Um, this is an arboretum in downtown Seattle. I've actually, my daughter goes to uh, college in Seattle and I've been by that building due to COVID. I have not been in it yet, but um, I'm hoping that someday I will get to go in and see how uh, the engineering uh, has constructed this, this building. And finally then in the bottom right-hand corner, 
you see a picture of a, a cube and that has been dipped in a bubble solution and you can see the minimal surface that has been defined by that uh, bubble surface and by the bubble solution. That is a, a mathematical concept or mathematics is very interested in, in being able to calculate those mathematical surfaces, those minimal surfaces. And uh, has, we've spent many years trying to understand how that happens. So again, it, there's a lot of steam involved in, in uh, bubbles and many more examples than what we've shown here. Next slide. One of my favorite is the aerogel. Aerogel is a space age material, often called solid smoke. Um, it is a silicon based sponge or uh, bub solid bubbles. It's 99.8% air. It's really amazing. I actually have some uh, in my office. It, you put it in your hand, it doesn't, it's lighter than a feather. It doesn't feel like you're holding anything. But yet, if you put a flame on one side of it, you can put your fingers on the other side of the aerogel, and because of its insulating quality, you don't, it does not get hot. It just gets a little bit warm, but it uh, is, has incredible insulating uh, quality. And of course, we're looking at how we might use that to uh, insulate homes, insulate aircrafts, uh, spacecraft that uh, come back to Earth. Uh, we're finding, trying to find different uses for this aerogel or the solid smoke. Next slide. We, what we are, of course, interested in today is art, the A in STEAM, and we're going to do some bubble art. And uh, as I looked online, I found many examples of, of different types of bubble art in many shapes or forms. We're going to experiment or play with a few of those today. So Brooke, if you would uh, tell us what kind of materials we need and uh, let's see, let's have some bubble fun. All right, so um, we are gonna make some bubble art. I've made an example this morning, another example of uh, bubble art that what it could possibly look like. These are the materials that you will need, um, water, dish soap, you can use paint or food coloring, um, whichever you have or prefer. You'll need some straws, small bowls or cups for mixing, and then of course your paper for making your art. Uh, while you all are gathering that, and we give you some time just to make sure you have everything that you need. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate something else, um, which is a bubble snake. So I got to experiment with my um, grandson who's five over the weekend and he ended up wanting to keep doing it. And he came in the morning the next day, can I make another bubble snake? So he had a blast and um, I'm sure you will too. We're not gonna actually create this together, just um, showing you another idea. We're gonna share with you a one pager for the bubble art activity. Um, and there will be a link in the resources for the bubble snakes if you want particulars on that. So I will kind of show you what I use, but basically just cut the end off of a water bottle and hook a sock and put a sock on the end of that water bottle. I also mixed up uh, one cup of water with two tablespoons of dish soap And I'm just gonna put this down so I have somewhere for my bubbles to go. Okay, so just to make it fun and get colorful, I'm gonna go ahead and use food dye on this and I'm just gonna kind of put some colors on the end and see what happens to my bubble snake. So no rhyme or reason to it. Just gonna put some colors on there. Let's see, some blue and red so far. So let's see what that looks like. Might as well do yellow and green too. All right. Last color. And then 
all I'm going to do is dip it in the bubble solution um, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So I've got my bubble solution, just going to give it a dip. Ooh, I like how the water or the colors were kind of going into the water. All right. Now I'm just going to blow into the end and we'll see what we end up with. All right, so how long of a bubble snake can you make? All right, so me and my grandson had a lot of fun with that, something to explore and um, great fun outside for sure. Okay, so hopefully that gave you an opportunity to get all of your materials that you're gonna need for the activity that we are gonna do together. Oh, thank you, Edith. <laughs> it was a good time, nice. Um, so, Again, water, dish soap, paint or food coloring straws, small bowls and paper. All right, I'm gonna give myself some space on here and I'm gonna switch my camera so you all can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna start with uh, three cups. I'm gonna do three different colors. You can do as many colors as you want. And definitely gonna get some paper towel ready. Okay, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put two tablespoons of dish soap. Doesn't have to be a specific kind of dish soap. And we're just gonna put uh, two tablespoons. I'm using one cup for each color. Um, all kinds of variations you can do. You can mix your colors. You can explore however you'd like. So this is your time to just have fun and play. Okay, so uh, I found after exploring a little bit that to get pretty vibrant colors, two tablespoons of dish soap, two tablespoons of paint, and one tablespoon of water works pretty well. Of course, the solution is also something that you can play around with. Um, as I was kind of exploring, I found one that looked almost more like watercolor, which I thought was pretty cool, but it's a little harder to see on the camera. So I was gonna go with the brighter colors today. All right, so yes, I made it. I had another bottle of soap just in case, but I think I've got enough to get two tablespoons per cup. Okay, so we've got our soap in our cups. Next, two tablespoons of paint in each of your cups. Okay, so uh, as far as the paint, you can explore different types of paint as well. Um, that's another thing to play around with. Um, food coloring also uh, works. I am using a washable paint uh, just because I knew I had to do it inside. So I thought it'd be a little safer and easier on my kitchen. Okay, so two tablespoons of the paint in there. Okay. And then I didn't really want my colors to kind of mix in, so I just got a cup of water to see if I could kind of clean that off in between. It's only semi-working. <laughs> okay. We'll call that good. And I'm gonna do another color. Again, two tablespoons of paint. Okay, so I really like these colors. I'm excited to see how it comes out. All right, that one off a little bit and then we've got purple. All right, we're almost to the fun part where we get to 
do some painting. All right. One and two. Okay, so I've got my two tablespoons of each of the uh, colors of paint in each of my cups. And I've got a straw for each cup. And I'm just gonna kind of stir and mix the paint up with the soap in there and get that good and mixed up. The last thing that we're gonna add is just one tablespoon of water. So what I noticed is that a little bit uh, less water kind of allows you to have a more vibrant color that comes from the bubbles when they pop. Let me just um, okay. All right. Mixing. Okay, last thing to put into our bubble solution is one tablespoon of water for each cup. What colors are you guys using as you're making your art? Curious to see what colors you guys like. Okay. And again, we're gonna give that a good stir. Got that all mixed in. And we're almost to the really fun part. Okay. So the straws are there because we're going to blow into the cups and get bubbles to go higher than the top of the cup. And we're gonna kind of print the bubbles onto the paper, which is really cool and uh, looks really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna get my piece of paper. All right. Less water means higher concentration of pigments of brighter colors. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, um, why we needed kind of less water. So um, just that there's, you know, the color pigment is stronger in there and it kind of sits on the bubbles. Um, but definitely it's a good thing to explore and one of those opportunities for um, investigation. And all right, so I'm gonna start with this kind of turquoise blue because it's one of my favorite colors. And basically we're just gonna blow some bubbles in there. We want it to rise above the cup and we're gonna print. I'm gonna put an extra cup that doesn't have anything in there so I can put my straws in there so I can get a good print of the bubbles. All right, so here we go. Let's see how this goes. All right, I've got a good, nice rise on my bubbles and now I'm just gonna print. Okay, so can you see that? I love this part where there's still bubbles popping and you can kind of watch them pop and then see what the print does. Okay, now it's your turn to explore. I'm gonna create my bubble art while you create yours. And then we'll come back in five minutes and um, share any ideas that you tried. So feel free to be creative with your art. Feel free to try different things. And then um, we'll share in a minute. So let's do some art together. You'll notice that some questions came up on the screen to kind of think about as we're making our art, um, being really curious and conscious as we're looking into the bubbles, as we're creating them. What are you noticing? Um, what do you observe? And of course that creativity, um, but just have fun. Okay. All right. 
Let's see, where do I want these to go? I want them a little darker. Okay. Oh, I got some big bubbles on that one. Oh no, they popped. Okay. Brooke, are you using any kind of special paper? Um, I am using, it's just uh, watercolor and acrylics. Got it at Walmart. Wasn't expensive. So the more absorbent paper is probably better. Um, yeah, so we did try it with some thinner regular paper and uh, it did work, but it does, you know, absorb the, the moisture. So um, if you want to stir your piece of paper, that might be helpful. You could also use like index cards. Really anything you want. like I might have missed a tablespoon in my orange cup or something. I'm going to add some more soap to that one. See if I can't get more bubbles out of it. Okay. That helped. I thought <laughs> they just don't want to stay the orange ones. Okay, there we go. Don't pop. All right, got some. Want some more blue in there. our little one's going to enjoy blowing into the cup and just making the bubbles though even uh enjoy their art of course but how fun is that okay i want more purple Yeah, so just as Aileen was saying, young ones noticing length and comparing sizes. I mean, it just opens up so much opportunity for discussion about um, the size and comparing uh, the different bubbles, comparing the prints. There's so many different places to look for patterns, for geometry, for um, investigating the different solutions, shapes that they notice, yeah. All right, we've got about one more minute for our first little exploration and then we'll come back and share a little of what you all tried. Can't wait to hear some of the ideas you guys came up with. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm really liking how the circle from the lid of the cup imprints on there. Sometimes it's almost like a big bubble with a bunch of irregularly shaped bubbles. I've got this bubble that is so 
I mean, it looks so close to like a perfect. Oh, I'll show you after we come back, but it's almost like a perfect circle. All right, let's see what color do I need now? I think I want orange over here. Let's see if I can get it before it goes. Nope, but I got a circle. So there's some orange over there. Okay. Um, let's see, we've got some comments. Can't wait to share the activity, the colors, the shapes. Super fun, right? All right, um, yes to blowing bubbles when mine were little and shots were a problem. I used to bring bubbles. Now I just saw breathe in, blow bubbles. Oh, how cute. Bubbles art, marble art. Yeah, some of the comparisons to different designs and things we see in nature is really um, another thing to notice. Um, surprise, interest, what's not to love. Yes, so um, feel free to now kind of throw in the chat what are some different things that you tried as you were making your art? Um, and let me switch my camera. So as you were exploring, was there, were there different ideas, different strategies that you did? I'm gonna show you one of, um, one thing that I kind of like trying, which, what if you just want to print a bubble? <laughs> so I'm gonna try and see if I can get just one bubble to print in a space where I want it. So, oh, the other thing I was gonna show you is, look how nearly perfectly round this bubble came out to be. I mean, all of them are so, the ones that are joined together really have these different um, shapes to them, but that one was all by itself. Okay. So I'm just going to dip my straw in the uh, bubble mixture, and then I'm going to try to blow a bubble and print it on there. That didn't work. Ah. So as it dries, it kind of makes a cooler design. I don't know if you can see that. But um, yeah, so. I'm gonna try printing some bubbles in this next round where we get to play and have a little more fun. Um, food coloring works better than the paint. Great, so somebody's exploring different um, types of color to put into the solution. So if you haven't tried that, feel free to run to your kitchen, grab some food coloring um, or paint either way. They look so pretty, strategies we tried. Okay, so we tried laying our paper on top of the cup, then further away, we tried more water, uh, color paint to make darker, put a thin film of bubble solution on the table, then dip the straw and blow a series on the table, then print. Very cool. And I would do that if I was outside, maybe I'll run outside <laughs> on our next trip while you guys are making yours and try that. That actually reminds me of another um, option which if I blow all of them and then put them together in a little bundle. So they kind of print side by side, do the orange last because they keep popping on me. Mm. There we go. All right, I'm gonna do these two together on this side and just see what that looks like. So like a little double print all right, any other ideas that you wanna share before we get to explore a little bit more, try a few different things? Um, somebody was talking earlier about uh, when they were remembering bubbles and what they think of when they think of bubbles and being outside and blowing the bubbles and kids going around chasing them. Um, it seems like it would be really fun to have them have a piece of paper and you color the bubbles go outside, blow the bubbles, and they can just kind of catch them and see what their art looks like that way too. If you're outside and you want to try that, or maybe you're inside and you're fine with cleaning up afterwards, that'd be a fun thing to try as well. 
Um, here's some more creative ideas. I mean, look at how kind of creative you can get with your art. You can be really particular um, and in your design. Um, I really like how they left that part. I wonder if they used tape or something to kind of make the hearts and cover that space and then do all their bubbles around that. Isn't that nice? I like that too. It makes good use of negative space, which right. is a, a formidable topic in, in art. In the, in the hydrangea, I love being able to use bubbles to create hydrangea there. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we're gonna take another five minutes. Go ahead, make some more art, explore, have fun. Okay, I think what I'm gonna try. Don't breathe too hard or too often. Don't want you hyperventilating. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Lisa, I'm glad you're having fun, me too. I think I'm gonna to try to just print like single bubbles on this one and see what I can create. It's crazy because it's like the, I can see the um, solution like going around the bubble and coming to almost like a little pool at the bottom of the bubble and then you set it on there and there's, I don't know, it's really cool. And, and I think that is representing a scientific principle there, Brooke, that, that uh, yeah. the paint is water soluble is my guess and the bubble is not. Mm. And so the paint is having a hard time mixing with the with the soap. So it kind of pools, it pooling on the on the bottom makes sense. Oh. Awesome. So we have another uh sciencey kind of question. Um Kyleen sees shapes similar to the chambers of the human heart in the bubble prints. She's asking if the heart uh is the heart a form of bubble. Hmm. I think there may be a geometric uh, connection there it, in terms of how the, the chambers are formed, the muscles are formed. Um, could very well, there could well, very well be a mathematical connection between that and bubbles joining together. Oh, that one was so fun. That one lasted a while. Yeah, it did. Oh, so one thing you told me, um, I don't know, a few days ago or so, that if the bubbles sit longer, then um, that might make a difference and you might get better bubbles. So I went ahead and made some this morning and they've been sitting. So I wanted to kind of compare and see the difference, what the bubble art might look like what the bubbles might be like. So I'm gonna kind of explore that and we'll see if there's a difference. It's still really cool. <laughs> All right. It's so cool when you have the cup just filled with bubbles to look inside and just see all the different shapes. Like I see a pentagon there. I, one, two, three, yeah, I see a, um, a hexagon. But there's just so many different shapes and things that you can see inside of the bubbles. Oh, that one's cool. I like watching them pop. It's soothing. Let's see, we got some more comments. I, I agree with Susan that glycerin will increase the um, uh, the time, the length of the bubbles last. Um, I've seen recipes with corn syrup as well. 
to do that. Um, you can make them last quite a bit longer. So on the one pager, um, there's another link that we're sharing in the resources section of the one pager that has a couple of different solutions to try out. One's supposed to make them rise higher. Um, oh, do you remember what any of the other ones were? There's a couple different ones to try out. But yeah, I think glycerin was one of the things to be added on one of those as well. And then I love questions like the timing, great way for homeschool families who do family style learning to meet the needs of littles while challenging the older kiddos with variables. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, all ages are gonna have a blast with this, uh, whether they get to blow the bubbles or not, even the real, real little ones love to see bubbles. So um, I love that. You can totally engage the whole family. Here's an image of uh, two images. One is of, a, of bubble art where somebody took a, um, uh, did a bubble snake with purple and blue, red and blue colors. And then the image on the right is a, actually a cross-sectional picture of a cell, a biological cell. You can certainly see the uh, organic pattern, the biological pattern in, in each of those. And cells basically are bubbles. And uh, they have a, a oil layer, that a lipid layer, which holds the uh, internal bits and pieces in the cell and protects it from, from the outside, just like a bubble uses a bubble wall to, to uh, form a, a spherical surface. Wow. Um, it even reminds me on the left of coral. Um, just the shapes and the way that it looks are um, just reminiscent of coral to me. It's crazy how you find the, the relationships just in structure and nature. I, I absolutely agree. Coral, um, lava rock. If you pick up a lava rock and you see the, the whole, the bubbles that are um, of gases that have expanded, uh, you see something very similar to that. Hmm. So Patterns it's in nature. Like the lava rock seems like the bubbles were the negative space, and then there's something that formed around it, sort of. Yeah, trapped gas within the rock, and then as it cooled, it created those those negative space. Very cool. Ah, oh, bread. My favorite topic. What if you use containers with different shapes? Great idea. Um, if anyone did try uh, different types of containers, you can feel free to throw in the chat what you think about that question. What if you use different containers with different shapes? Um, so it was mentioned you could use a bowl, you could use a cup. Um, bones losing calcium. <laughs> Is that what that looks like? All right. Okay, I want to blow one more bubble and then we will talk about some connections. Oh, I had too much fun. That one was getting so big. <laughs> so then it became less about the print and a lot more about how big I could make that bubble. That was really cool. But was I could, it was like, what was that? That was huge. It was. And I don't know if you could see it on camera, but there was like the paint was spinning around it. It was really cool. Okay, great to test it. Shape difference doesn't change the bubble shape challenge older kids to prove that's true. I love how you're coming up with questions that you could um, present kind of a challenge, something for them to explore, um, goes back to those kind of 
uh, STEAM principles, getting them investigating, making hypotheses. Okay, so how did your bubble art come out? Um, we'll share towards the end if you want to take pictures and share with us, tag us on social media. We'll share how to do that uh, in just a little bit. So there you go. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. All right. Okay, so um, if you'd like to go to slide 14, see so you had some more things that you uh, I wanted to share kind of real life connections. So here are a few more pictures that I found on the internet that uh, represent different bubble shapes, which I found very reminiscent as I did these experiments, very rem reminiscent of what I was seeing with, with groups of bubbles together. And uh, the bubble in the upper right-hand corner is, a, is an actual picture of a group of bubbles blown with a straw. And then the other pictures are uh, art sculptures, uh, domes, built rooms that uh, have been created uh, architecturally with that idea in mind. And uh, I definitely see the similarities between uh, what's created in nature and what uh, we've created architecturally. And, and there are many examples from around the world of, of uh, architects and engineers drawing inspiration from bubbles to create different buildings. Really is quite amazing. That is amazing. I mean, that's, that one on the top left looks like the top of my cup <laughs> or even on the right, top right. Uh, so we have a question. Has anyone used watercolors? I haven't. Steve, have you? I have not. Um, I think it should work. Um, I think the intensity of the, like for food coloring, you get a very, it's very concentrated dye. And uh, you probably will get a little more vivid colors than you would with um, food, <laughs> with um, watercolors. But yeah. uh, maybe with a smaller amount of, um, of, of liquid, you could get that to work. Yeah, let us know, tag us uh, if you find out and try it. So Susan actually says yes, and it's beautiful. And somebody said watercolor paper is nice also. So there's so many different materials to explore. Uh, Sandra says she uses liquid watercolor and it works. Um, I didn't use watercolors. What's that? Please send us some pictures. I'd love yeah, to see we'd love to see these uh, for sure. So I didn't, this is all paint, but I thought I could show you just kind of the difference depending on just the saturation of paint, um, the ratios that you use. So of course, here's kind of the brightness of what I was playing with today. Um, here's one where I put a little more paint. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, can you see that? And then this one is actually my favorite. And to me, what reminded me of this one was the watercolors because the print just came out so light and just kind of airy and the way that everything just looked, looked blended together. Um, I just really like this one, but it reminded me when you said watercolor. So kind of depending on your mixture, you can really change the look of the result and definitely something to explore. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully you guys had a good time um, playing with bubbles. And if we can go to slide 20. Feel free to throw these in the chat anything that you noticed in the bubbles or in the art, any connections you made with steam, anything real world. You guys have been doing this all along, uh, throwing in your ideas of things you see in nature, hearts and bones and so on. And uh, 
Oh no, <laughs> right as we close out. So I'm gonna let uh, Aileen and Steve take us out of here. And thanks for joining us. I had a blast with all of you. Thank you so much, Brooke. That was so much fun. I know a lot of people were just really into it, being creative, no matter what your age, I think being creative and um, even through art and something like bubbles is uh, very, brings us joy as humans and brings us a way of just um, fulfilling and meaningful work. And I think that that's, those are the things that we want our children either in our class or in our home to feel as they explore some of these things. And Thank you, Steve, for the background, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of science. That's great to start introducing young children to, to just be curious about even something that seems simple like a bubble, the complex, complexity and the amazement that can come out through there. So again, please share your photos. Um, we'd love to see them. Love for you to share um, what you're doing, either have done today or will do with your classroom. It would be great to see that. Um, we also wanted to remind you that we have resources on our website. Um, there are one pagers that go with each of our um, hands online activities that give a snapshot of the materials, some questions to ask if you're um, a teacher or a parent going to do this with young children and some things to notice while they're doing that and to explore a little bit further, whether that's the geometry side of it or the science or both of those things. We want you to visit our website and definitely get um, some of that information. As well, we wanted to announce an upcoming play shop. This play shop called Paper Imagineering is going to um, ha be happening on May 25th. And this is gonna be geared for our younger learners. So we're talking pre-K, so about third grade. So if you'd like to come and, and just explore with us, we really believe that teachers are learners first. So come and explore with us uh, in these two hours around um, things that you can explore through paper and things that you could hopefully do in this virtual environment or if you're already in person, do it in person in small groups with young ones or their families. So um, the registration fee is there and you can register um, at our website for this play shop. But we also wanted to raffle off some free registrations right now. So hopefully you're still with us and you'll stay with us just a little bit longer because you do need to be present to win. And um, I think Chris has everything set up so we can see this wheel uh, moving and we're going to spin this wheel and give uh, a couple of people here who are present uh, registrations. Right, Edith Gonzalez, are you here with us today? You can say in the chat, oh, she's here. She's saying yay right away. All right, Edith, we'll be in contact with you. Um, how to register. All right, congratulations. Let's see who our other winner is today. All right, Sandra Vargas, are you here today? Are you still with us? Give her a few moments, just in case she's trying to type frantically and say, I'm here. Yes, she's here. Okay, congratulations to both Edith and Sandra. We'll look forward to having you at our upcoming play shop. And um, thank you for being here today. Um, also wanted to announce um, next month's Hands Online is around paper weaving, and we're excited about this, the beautiful art you can make with paper weaving, but a lot of uh, mathematics and spatial reasoning that's there. Um, so we're excited to have that next, next month. Please register so we know that you're coming and you get the reminders and the link in time. And we thank you for being with us today. Um, as always, let's keep in touch, stay um, in tune to our website, and connect with us in any way that you'd like to through social media or email. And thank you again for um, to Steve and Brooke for today. And we wish everyone a good evening and a rest, good rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone.